In this video, we're just going to go over some different options that we have for the notation when we're talking about derivatives. And there are lots of options, and there's a good historical reason for that. Calculus was not invented by just one person. Newton and Leibniz were both trying to answer similar questions in math, although they were sort of coming at things from different perspectives. And they both sort of developed the rules of calculus as they each had their own type of notation. And as time passed, different people were using different types of notation. And they found that sometimes Newton's notation was a little bit simpler. And in other contexts, Leibniz's notation was really actually kind of nice, even though it, at the first glance, looks more complicated. So I'm going to go over all the different types of notation that we have for both the derivative function and the derivative at a point. And that'll be a point whose x value is a. OK. So if I've got a function y equals f of x, we've already seen that we can use the prime notation. That's what Newton developed. So we've got f prime evaluated at x. And if I want to evaluate that at a point a, I just plug in a for x. Now, since we can also call the function, instead of f of x, we can call it just y, we saw that we can call the derivative y prime. So we can take either name for the function and just attach a prime to it. This doesn't come with a place for the input. So if we want to evaluate that at a, we saw in the last video that we just use this evaluation bar. That means this function evaluated at an input value of a. All right. Now, remembering that the derivative is the slope of the secant line. There's nothing in this notation that suggests slope to me. But Leibniz came up with this notation, dy by dx. Okay. So if we think about it, when we have the slope of a secant line, that's the change in y over the change in x. That's delta y over delta x. Well, the slope of the tangent line is just the limit. And it would be the limit as delta x, as the run goes to 0, of delta y over delta x. And the notation that Leibniz came up with is that when you take the limit of these deltas to indicate that you've taken the limit, so that you're now talking about the slope of a tangent rather than the slope of a secant, you replace them with d. What's nice about that is I can see that it's a fraction. I can see that the top is associated with y values and the bottom associated with x values. So that notion of rise over run, of what the derivative actually means, is sort of embedded in the notation. Now, that looks a little bit more complicated than just sticking a prime there. But the advantage, I think, is that it suggests a little bit what this function means. For now, we're going to think of this as one symbol. It turns out that dy and dx do have some meaning on their own. And we'll talk about that later this semester. But for right now, this is one symbol. We're going to keep them together as one fraction. If I wanted to evaluate that at a point, since there's no place for my input here, I would simply write evaluated at a. Okay. Now, with this notation, our function had two names. We could call it y or we could call it f of x. It's also possible to write df by dx. So just name the function f instead of naming it y. And then I would evaluate that at a. I would indicate that, again, with an evaluation bar. Okay. Another option that I have is that I can write d by dx of f of x. Okay. Now let me talk about this one for a little bit. Okay. We're sort of used to the notion that if I have a fraction, like if I have 2x over 3, that's the same as 2 thirds x. I 
can sort of take this part of the top and I can slide it off to the side and write it on the right hand side. That's essentially what we did with this F here. And just when we slid it off, we wrote it a little more formally. We wrote that it was a, a function of x. Okay. This is essentially saying we're going to take d by dx, where there's nothing right here after the d. What comes after the d is that f of x. This part right here, the d by dx, that's what we call the derivative operator. And it's embedded, it's part of this symbol, and it's part of this symbol. The rule is always, whatever comes after the d on top is what you're taking the derivative of. So here I'm taking the derivative of y. Here I'm taking the derivative of f. Here I'm taking the derivative of f of x. Okay. So an operator is kind of like a function of functions. It's something where the input is a function and the output is a function. So I'm going to plug in f of x. What it's going to give out is the derivative of f, which I could denote with any of these bits of notation. An operator isn't quite a function of functions. It's actually a relation uh, where the input is a function. There's no rule that says that an operator has to have a unique output. Now, it does turn out that this particular operator has a unique output. If a function has a derivative, that derivative is unique. Okay. But that's not part of the definition of an operator. An operator is just an ordered pair where the input, the first thing that you're plugging in, is itself a function. Okay, so we've got this. Now, you might think that when I wanted to evaluate this at a point, I would just write d by dx of f of a. And that is actually wrong. I would have to write d by dx of f of x evaluated at a. That's because this is the thing I'm taking the derivative of. If I plug in the number a before I take the derivative, I've gone from a function that's potentially changing, that takes on different values for x, to something that's constant. f of a is just a number. Okay, Maybe f of a is 2. So if I plugged in a first, I'd be saying, what's the derivative of 2? Instead of, what's the derivative of this function that happens to give me 2 at this particular point? Okay, So very important, this says take the derivative first, then plug in a to that derivative function. Okay. Now, looking at all of this notation, uh, you might have some that you prefer, and you might have some that you say, I'm never, ever going to use that notation. And it's fine if you never, ever, ever use some of this notation, except that you've got to be able to recognize what it means. Because I and the authors of your textbook are going to use all of these types of notation. So, if you don't like this notation, you still have to know what it means so that you can say, oh, that just means this or this. You're welcome to switch to the notation that you like. That's totally fine. Okay. This notation looks, I think, the most complicated. And when you're first presented with it, you might say, that one, no, I'm never going to use. I want to just show you that that's actually really useful notation. If I have f of x equals x squared, we've seen, in fact, I think this was the first problem where we calculated together the formula for the derivative function, that's going to be 2x, something I don't expect you to have memorized at this point. Eventually, we're going to learn a shortcut for calculating derivatives so that you can do that very quickly. And some of you may already be familiar with that shortcut. Notice, I gave you two pieces of information. I told you what the original function was, and then I told you what the derivative was. And to give you two pieces of information, it took two equations. If I use this notation, I can give you both pieces of information in one equation. Because I can say the derivative, and instead of writing the name of the function, I can put the formula for the function. This says the derivative of x squared 
is equal to 2x. It's one equation that contains two pieces of information. The original function is the squaring function. Its derivative is 2x. One very common notational mistake I see. I'll often see people say dy by dx and then write x squared. Remember, the rule is whatever comes after the d on top is what you're taking the derivative of. So this says I'm taking the derivative of y, not of x squared. This would mean dy by dx, the derivative, times x squared. That's not what I mean. This means dy by d, sorry, d by dx, the derivative of x squared. So do be careful if you are using this notation that the function, which you can indicate either by its name or by its formula, but the function you're taking the derivative of is the first thing you see after that d on the top. I will try as we work through some the remaining problems in this section to make sure I'm varying the notation just so we get some practice using all the different types of notation that we have. I've got two more options up here on the board. I confess, I forgot to include them initially. We changed textbooks about a year or so ago, and this didn't used to be included, but it's included in the new textbook. This isn't as common notation, but you may encounter it. So for the derivative function, we can put a capital D in front of the name of the function, and that means the derivative of f, which is a function of x. If you're evaluating that at a particular point a, this is a place for the input to the derivative function. You just plug in a. Sometimes you'll see a subscript of x after that d. That just says it's the derivative with respect to x of f of x. That just says x is the input variable. That's emphasizing that that's the name of the input variable. Sometimes in applications, we'll be working with functions of time, in which case this subscript would just be a t instead, and then you'd see a t here. And with that notation as well, if you're evaluating at a point, you just plug in the x value of that point into the input parentheses there.